As transistors become smaller and smaller, silicon chips are approaching the limits of their manufacturing process. After 2 nanometers, materials like graphene and other carbon-based materials may take over. The three giants in advanced manufacturing, TSMC, Samsung, and Intel, are all launching their attacks to achieve mass production of 2 nanometer chips recently. TSMC showcased the test results of its 2 nanometer prototype chips to its two major customers, Apple and Nvidia. Samsung announced a price reduction for its 2 nanometer prototype chips, trying to gain an edge. Intel, with the weakest current position but the loudest slogan, aims to regain leadership by 2025 as the only American company, making America great again. Samsung Electronics plans to catch up with TSMC and begin mass production of 2 nanometer chips by 2025. This was reported by the Korean Economic Daily in June 2023. At that time, Samsung held the 2023 Samsung Foundry Forum in Silicon Valley, California, where they not only announced their timeline for mass production and application of 2 nanometer semiconductors, but also stated their plans to use the chips in high-performance computing products by 2026 and expand into the automotive field by 2027. The mission to surpass TSMC in five years can be traced back to 2009. In a top-secret meeting of Samsung's highest management decision-making body, a plan called Kill Taiwan was approved, with TSMC as the primary target. By offering doubled salaries, Samsung managed to poach dozens of key personnel from TSMC, including the technological backbone, Liang Mengsong. During that period, TSMC was not doing well. In 2006, Vice President of R&D, Shang-Yi Cheng, retired. After the mass production of 45 nanometer chips in 2007, the yield rate of 40 nanometer chips remained low, and coupled with the 2008 financial crisis, the semiconductor market significantly contracted. In 2009, TSMC's founder, Morris Cheng, who had been retired for four years, decided to take back control of TSMC. He brought back Shang-Yi Cheng, who had retired three years earlier, and his first demand was to quickly spend the newly added $1 billion on R&D funds. Morris Cheng's biggest concern was old employee Meng Song Liang, who had worked for 17 years at TSMC and was a student of Shang-Yi Cheng. Liang had long served as the Director of Advanced Process Technology at TSMC. In 2003, TSMC defeated IBM with its independently developed 130 nanometer copper process. And Liang played a significant role, second only to Shang Yi Cheng. Their rivalry continued at SMIC, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation. Liang brought a large number of FinFET talents to Samsung, which rapidly closed the technology gap between Samsung and TSMC. Samsung, ahead of TSMC, was the first to achieve mass production of 14 nanometer chips and attracted major customers like Apple and Qualcomm. Morris Cheng initiated the Nightbird project and assembled a research and development team of more than 300 people, working around the clock to tackle the next generation 10 nanometer process. Starting from 10 nanometer, TSMC gained an advantage again on June 30. 2022, Samsung announced the mass production of 3 nanometer chips, becoming the first in the world. Moreover, they adopted the Gaffet, gate all around field effect transistor, process for the first time, replacing the mainstream FinFET structure. Compared to the latter, GAA structure can more accurately reduce leakage power consumption and lower power consumption. Over a month before the mass production of 3 nanometer chips, US President Biden had just visited Samsung's Pyeongtaek factory, located 70 kilometers south of Seoul. By showcasing the 3 nanometer chips to Biden, Samsung demonstrated its strength in overtaking TSMC, 
following President Biden's visit to Samsung's semiconductor factory with South Korean President Moon Jae-in, Samsung publicly announced a massive investment plan. Over the next five years, they will invest $355 billion in the chip and biotechnology fields, which is approximately 25 trillion Chinese yuan. The China National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund, launched in 2014, has received less than 250 billion Chinese yuan for phases 1 and 2, and 300 billion Chinese yuan for phase 3, totaling about 550 billion Chinese yuan, which is only one-fifth of this plan. The Pyongyang campus that Biden visited has a total investment exceeding $24 billion which is even larger than the scale of the first phase of the China National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund. According to Samsung's latest detailed roadmap, in addition to mass producing two nanometer chips by 2025, they also plan to expand the production of chips manufactured using the GAA process to 3D packaging. Samsung has already formed an advanced packaging, AVP, business team within its semiconductor division. By 2027, Samsung will be on schedule to mass-produce one. For nanometer chips, IN June 2023, TSMC, which holds a market share of nearly 60%, typically avoids commenting on its competitors. However, in the same month, TSMC also made some noise, its 2 nanometer technology was progressing better than expected and was set to achieve the goal of trial production in 2024 and mass production in 2025. Insiders revealed that TSMC would convene a research and development team of over a thousand people to lead the way in mass producing 2 nanometer chips at its Fab 20 in Baoshan, Shinshu, Taiwan, for a single 2 nanometer chip. The price approaches nearly $25,000, marking a more than 30% increase compared to the price of less than $20,000 for a 3 nanometer chip. In the advanced process technology field, TSMC holds the sky high pricing power and a gross profit margin of over 40%. Only Texas Instruments, which focuses on mature processes, has a similar profit margin, however, Achieving such high prices requires substantial investment. In 2022, TSMC's R&D expenses reached $5.472 billion, nearly quadrupling over the past decade, and its cash investment flow amounted to $39.9 billion, also more than quadrupling. While Samsung took the lead in mass producing GAA-based 3 nanometer chips, the low yield rate has become a costly hurdle in its attempts to catch up with TSMC. During the initial production phase, Samsung's 3 nanometer yield rate was only 20%. Despite continuous improvements, the yield rate remained around 60%. TSMC has introduced multiple new technologies in the 2 nanometer process, including GAA transistors, backside power delivery, and ultra-high performance capacitors. The GAA, seen as the cornerstone technology for processes below 2 nanometers, was previously not present. In the past, transistors were long and used a planar structure. Over the past decade, following Intel's adoption of FinFET at 22 nanometers, the 3D fin-like structure has become mainstream. This also holds for TSMC's 3 nanometer process, IN semiconductors. Computation is performed by opening when powered and closing when not powered, controlled by the gate's regulating valve. In the FinFET structure, the gate blocks three sides of the current channel. As semiconductors become smaller, the gate also becomes smaller, leading to reduced control capabilities. Once the size goes below 2 nanometers, leakage increases in areas without gates, leading to power waste and difficulty in improving performance. GAA reorients the previous vertically oriented fin-like device horizontally, so gates now encircle all four sides and allow for multiple parallel placements. Of course, 
the technology difficulty of GAA has correspondingly increased. Due to limitations of the EUV lithography machine, it can only process 90 wafers per hour, while the industry expects a speed of at least 125 wafers per hour. It is currently difficult to achieve a simultaneous high yield rate and efficiency. Currently, TSMC is the only company publicly disclosing information regarding the structure, 2 nanometer node iteration, and resulting changes in density and performance. At last year's technology symposium, TSMC mentioned that the 2 nanometer process could bring a 10% to 15% performance improvement under the same power consumption and the same number of transistors. It could also achieve a 25% to 30% reduction in power consumption at the same frequency and complexity, as well as a 1.1 times increase in transistor density. A typical chip contains 50% logic circuits, 30% SRAM units and 20% analog circuits. The increase in transistor density specifically refers to the logic circuits. The scaling speed of device sizes for analog and storage circuits between different process nodes generally lags behind that of logic circuits. Looking solely at data from logic circuits, a 1.1 times increase is not very ideal. At this year's symposium, this figure was updated to over 1.15 times, indicating that the process is still undergoing continuous improvement. In comparison, Samsung and TSMC have not disclosed detailed information. Samsung claims a 12% improvement in performance, a 25% increase in power, and a 5% reduction in size for its 2 nanometer chip. Intel has only stated that the Intel 20A offers a 15% performance improvement per watt compared to the Intel 3. Only TSMC and Samsung have achieved mass production of 3 nanometer chips, while Intel lags behind by several generations. We only consider transistor density, TSMC and Samsung are significantly ahead in absolute terms. This also explains why Intel managed to achieve mass production of 20A before 2024 through competitive positioning based on nomenclature. According to IC Knowledge's data, the 20A transistor density is small, making it easier to manufacture, since TSMC and Samsung surpassed Intel in the 7 nanometer and 5 nanometer eras. Intel has changed its iteration strategy and refrained from discussing several nanometers. In February of this year, Intel once again confirmed at a strategic media communication meeting that the test chips of 20A have been taped out. Currently, Ericsson has announced the adoption of Intel's 1.8 nanometer process technology to customize 5G chips. Intel plans to mass-produce the Intel 20A process in 2024. Each foundry has a different name for their process, such as Intel 20A, TSMC N2, and Samsung 2 Gap. However, these names do not necessarily represent the actual physical dimensions of the transistors or devices. The key point is that the two nanometer processes of these three companies have not been specifically defined or exposed, so we cannot assume that they are all of the same generation. Advanced processes are highly competitive, with only a slight difference between them. An EUV lithography machine can cost up to 150 million euros, and even with money, it is not guaranteed that one can obtain it. Apart from the three major players, other manufacturers find it challenging to bear such enormous costs, making it almost impossible for them to manufacture at the 2 nanometer scale. Over the past 20 years, many companies have fallen behind in the race for transistor technology. By 2002-2003, there were 26 semiconductor companies manufacturing the most advanced 130 nanometer chips, including 10 Japanese companies. However, by 2010 to 2012, the number of companies involved in 28-32 nanometer technology had decreased to only 10, with no Japanese companies among them, 
Japan was unwilling to lag behind and formed the semi-public semiconductor company Rapidus last year to directly compete in the 2 nanometer field and reclaim the lost decade of semiconductor manufacturing. Rapidus began construction of its Hokkaido IIM-1 factory in September 2023, aiming to be the first production facility in Japan for two. Nanometer and more advanced logic semiconductors, Rapidus was established with an investment of 7.3 billion Japanese yen, approximately 376 million renminbi, from eight Japanese companies, including Toyota, Sony, NTT, NEC, SoftBank, Denso, Kyoxia, and Mitsubishi UFJ. The Japanese government also provides a subsidy of 70 billion Japanese yen, approximately 3.605 billion renminbi. As research and development budget, Rapidus aims to achieve mass production of 2 nanometer chips by 2027. Since this year, Rapidus has established deep collaborations with IBM in the United States, ASML in the Netherlands, and the Canadian startup Tens Torrent Japan has suddenly made a move. Leveraging the momentum of the US Chip Act, and it is reported that they have managed to acquire the EUV lithography machine that was previously said to be unattainable. As for how much benefit the CHIP Act can bring to Japan, it is difficult to say. A year and a half has passed, and the first recipient of the subsidy was the US defense contractor BAE Systems, receiving approximately $35 million. They are using the funds to manufacture chips for F-15 and F-35 fighter jets, satellites, and other defense systems. Other companies do not have such a strong endorsement and have to wait in line. As for the subsidies for electric vehicles mentioned in the Inflation Reduction Act, there have been recent rumors suggesting that Tesla may not receive the $7,500 subsidy per vehicle. Let's talk about money again. The Japanese industry estimates that approximately 20 trillion yen is needed for the development of the 2 nanometer technology, and an additional 30 trillion yen is required for setting up production lines. Hiring semiconductor talents also requires a significant amount of funding. Currently, they have invested 77.3 billion yen, which is still insufficient, which is far from the required 50 trillion yen for hardware investment, why rush for advanced processes? It's not just because of the technological advantage, but also because of their value. Omdia predicts that based on 2026, the entire wafer foundry market will reach $187.9 billion, with the market for sub-5 nanometer technology reaching $64.5 billion accounting for 34 percent. The main applications of 2 nanometer technology are in PC servers, GPUs, graphics processing units, and mobile socks, system on chips. The company that achieves mass production first will have the pricing power in the advanced chip market, as well as a greater profit margin, competitive advantage, and more extensive room for development. development. development.